What's up, party people? It is Coach David here and excited to talk today with you about Neville Goddard's revision method. What can we revise and can we actually, actually change the past? This actually came in as a question from an email subscriber in the email community, my Coach David email community. This is a hot, hot topic for anybody that is in, involved in Neville's work, Neville communities, anywhere on Reddit, YouTube, whatever. But I would even go to say, you know, this would be of interest to anybody who wants to change their past in terms of a more traumatic experience or anything that feels like it holds them back in the present. And certainly Neville was a huge advocate of this method. In fact, the book, The Law and the Promise, was pretty much entirely about revision. That was all about revision, where feeling is a secret is all about eliciting that feeling of living in the end in order to create the reality. Revision is all about basically doing the same thing, but from a different angle, because Neville noticed, as anybody notices in their own lives, and certainly uh, helping healing practitioners like myself, creation practitioners, if you will, we notice how much the past gets in the way for everyone, right? Me too. So here's the lovely question I want to show you from Mafalda. Thank you so much for this question who reached out and I said, hey, let me make a video on this so that everybody can benefit. By the way, just real quick, uh, if you want to uh, become part of the email community and watch my 10 minute quick crash course on reality shifting, then there is a link below the video in the pinned comment, probably both places. And I invite you to uh, come join us, come join us in there, learn more about the mind manifestation creation and just having that successful and fulfilled life that you want. Okay, so let's move into Mafalda's question. Super cool name, by the way. Love that name. So in two parts, Mafalda asked this. And the first is in Neville Goddard Reddit forums, there are many questions and posts about many subjects. And not long ago, I found this topic on using revision law of assumption to change the birth date. Actually change age, ID documents, not just to look and feel younger. What's your thought on this? Impossible or achievable? And then the second part is also we can, can we use revision to change a fact that happened in our past or just how we feel about it? Uh, imagine that some years ago I didn't pass my driver's exam and I felt frustrated and sad. Can I revise this in a way I didn't feel bad about it? Just accept it and move on. Or can I revise it to the fact that I had passed and been driving all this time? With the first question, I'll give you my take. My take is that is this achievable? I actually do think it's achievable. It's not impossible, however, to actually change in some way that event. However, however, I think it's highly unlikely for all of us in this apparently co-shared universe, if you will, but I do think it's achievable. Now, I didn't used to think this, right? I didn't. I, I come from a scientific background of sorts, at least in my degree. I have a molecular biology degree. I came from a family that was non-religious, non-spiritual, just average, regular family talk, caring for each other, but there was no spiritual talk. There was even no talk about like, what is reality, even from a scientific view. There was none of that. It was very, very interesting. It was like, it's so strange to me now because I live and think so differently because I went on a more, not on a more spiritual path, a spiritual path, or I was sort of, uh, you know, forced into it for better, not for worse, but for better, even though some worse things happened to force me into it. That's how it goes a lot of times, not always, but a lot of the time, probably most of the time for people, right? You can relate to this if you're watching. And here's the thing, in, in things like quantum physics, and I don't know if this ties to this point, but it definitely ties to the point of the past or even the future there is no evidence that that the past should be different than the future or, or if there's if if we're able to affect and change our future in the moment of now there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to change our past quantum physics says this actually it doesn't make any sense like linear time does not make any sense and we can just observe in our own life and linear indicates that well certainly one thing it indicates is that things move in a certain direction time moving only in one direction. This is the conundrum and what quantum physics says. It doesn't make any sense that time only seems to move forward and we couldn't go backward. And it seems counterintuitive 
especially with things like aging and our bodies getting older. But quantum, this is quantum physics. This is sort of the ultimate level of physics currently. And you could say string theory and whatever. Okay, whatever. Like I'm kind of grouping it all together, right? There's a big difference between Newtonian physics and quantum physics. Interesting stuff. Anyways, I don't want to go off too much on that. So I do think it's possible because quantum physics says to, to some degree here that it doesn't make any sense. So that therefore means it should be possible in some way. Now, I'm not able to do it in that sense that I'm aware of yet. It doesn't mean I can't or you can't. You probably aren't. But in the second part of the question and what Neville talks about with it, let's go to Neville for a second. By revising the scene of an accident, the interview with the employer and so on could change what seems to be the unalterable facts of the past. But remember my claims for imagining. Imagining creates reality. What it makes, it can unmake. It is not only conservative, Building a life from images supplied by memory, it is also creatively transformative, altering a theme already in being. And this is, of course, Law and the Promise, and uh, from my little Kindle book there. You got to remember that one of Neville's big rules is that imagination overrides physical. It is greater, or as is commonly said these days, 4D is greater than 3D. And this is something I have been experimenting with more and more and more. I actually do, I should make a video on something I call 4D painting where I am sitting in my current reality. If I'm in a kitchen and I paint over the kitchen that I want to be living in, in my new house or apartment or whatever, right? It's something that I desire. And I, while with eyes open, now I've had a lot of practice, eyes closed visualizing that allows me to do this. Or if I'm driving my car, I paint a scene that goes and I paint the car while I'm driving. I can see in my mind, even though my eyes are open seeing the physical, I am, able to do this. I just started doing this spontaneously the other week, actually <laughs> sort of made up this technique, quote unquote. I think you might, you probably have to have a certain level of visualizing practice with your eyes closed. Maybe not though. You can give it a try. I just explained it, but let's get back to revision here, which is seeing past events rewritten as we want them. And, and Neville, since, since imagination is greater than physical, and we can see that in very practical ways, right? We can see that with the invention of the rocket ship. It all started as an idea in someone's head. And that idea imagined over and over focused on came into physical form and there were actions to be taken and events occurred and resources showed up to make that happen. 4D over 3D. Again, I'm, I'm future forwarding here, right? I'm talking about usual feeling is a secret 40 over 3d but see this still applies to the past it doesn't matter which direction and this is in line with quantum physics now it, but see and that here's the weird thing is that event isn't here anymore it's not here you have to convince somebody that something happened to you and you have to convince yourself and this is neville's point and, and this is the weird thing about reality and this is why i love non-duality right this is why i love advaita vedanta buddhism to a certain degree but advaita is my is my favorite go-to it's it's my spiritual practice it's my ultimate spiritual practice let's say i don't consider what we're doing with you know law of assumption quote unquote spiritual i i, I consider it creative but when we're talking about spiritual, we're talking about getting to what's really, 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 really real. And everything is basically a dream world, in my view, and Advaita Vedanta's view. And when we're, when we're working with things like law of assumption, law of attraction, if you will, but you're going to be law of assumption if you're here. <laughs> no law of attraction, people are in law of assumption. Either way, they're two versions of ultimately the same thing, but I get why you might be drawn to the law of assumption like I am. Ultimately, it's all creative process, all creation. It's all big dream world. So, you know, when we're creating and, and what happens is because we believe that we are the past, our past to whatever degree and oftentimes a large degree. And that's how I am. This is why Neville recommends revision and it doesn't matter. And strangely enough, I watched a video recently on Neville Goddess, who's one of the few people that I follow on YouTube. Check her out. She's really great. She talks about how she did revision around the death of her father, which was quite a, you know, tragic event in the sense that he died during COVID alone in the hospital during the early part of COVID when it was, you know, apparently really, really bad. I wasn't there, but it, that's what the news told me. And it, I mean, it's obvious it was because he passed away from it and she rewrote her memory and it totally uh, cleared up the grief. So it worked. And see, this is ultimately what 
we have to look at as being pragmatists. Does it work or not? If one can't let go of the idea that the past can't be changed, even in memory, then you can't change it. That's a creation in and of itself. That's a meta belief, right? An underlying structural belief that if somebody comes to me for coaching in general and they believe, well, I can't change, I'm completely different than everybody else and I can't change. That belief is creating the reality that they can't change. That's how powerful the mind is. Until with awareness they see, well, first of all, we're not our beliefs, our thoughts, our mind. And that that is shiftable. But if one's been living in that for a long, long time, uh, that, you know, the mind creates a reality cage. And it creates it in positive directions too. It doesn't matter the direction. But if we don't have the awareness of consciousness, that this is how, for whatever reason, uh, things are quote unquote structured, then we, we're stuck in that cage. And it happens, in, it happens with money, relationships, health, everything. Spiritual practice, uh, I'm certainly not perfect with it, but I'm always trying to be aware of, okay, well, and especially if it's something that I want to create, well, if I'm saying anything that is in opposition to it or, you know, negating that creation, then I have to alter that or I have to check in and see is that thing in alignment. Let's move on to another Neville quote here. There's no inevitable permanence in anything. Well, this is true. See, this is why Neville's a non-dualist. This is why I love Neville. <laughs> And this is what the Buddhists say, so the Vaita Vedanta says, all non-dualism. Ultimately, I think probably Jesus would have said it, but some people got a hold of his words and put it in the form they did, and now we've got a very dualistic religion of Christianity. Islam too, Judaism, a lot of forms of Hinduism can be, and uh, I believe they're all wrong, ultimately. They're wrong. They, they don't make any sense. It's, uh, in my opinion. So both past and present continue to exist only because they are sustained by imagining on some level or other. And a radical transformation of life is always possible by man revising the undesirable, undesirable part of it. And remember, the part of life we're shifting here is the dream world, right? Um, because none of it's permanent, even what's in your imagination. But if we keep it there or bring it back up, it's there. So there is no inevitable permanence which allows us to shift it, but it's also not what's really real. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. A dream. So imagination is just being able to have control better of the dream. And this is what Neville helps with. Later on, Neville, I believe, tried to, to get away from that more and more, you know, to deeper levels. I think he got a bit stuck um, in ways that he really wanted to teach, but maybe he wasn't there really didn't know how to teach it. I don't know if he, if he experienced it to, to the level of non-dual masters like Nisargadatta Maharaj or Ramana Maharshi, um, Vivekananda. You know, I'm, I'm talking Advaita saints, gurus here that are passed away that I revere, that have upgraded my life so much, especially Ramana Maharshi's self-inquiry um, is incredible for getting free of illusory dreamlike reality especially troubling things and then if we want choose to go down the route route which you're all here for of having a better dream you know creating a preferred dream that that's why you come to the law of assumption more money better relationships better health better whatever experience then cool so i want to go back to mafalda's question here which is a great one so yes you can revise it it doesn't matter if it because it's only in your memory now where is it Mafalda and everyone, where is that memory of driving and not passing? It's nowhere but in your memory. It's not in anybody else's memory because they weren't there, quote unquote, to experience it. It's arguable who was there to experience it, even if it was you in this example. <laughs> we could have, that's a whole different topic. This, that's way outside the law of assumption, but it's a fascinating one and it can be a helpful one. So it does it matter if it helps you? If you revise it and you don't feel bad anymore why does it matter what was true see this is a trip i used to think in a very hard concrete things that what happens what happened now for sure even if we go to more standard psychological definitions of you know accepting the past forgiving and all this that changes the experience of it but what also can change the experience of it is to take on different viewpoints so let's say mom or dad said nasty things to you when growing up. Well, if you come from the perspective of, and this, is even, this isn't even revision we're talking about here. This is like perspectiving, right? Just made that word up, but having taking on perspectives. If you come from the position that mom and dad are big, bad, mean people, and they're doing mean things to you, then you experience that, and that tends to be down the road of self-victimization. 
But if you experience it and you go, well, wait a second and go a little deeper. Why did mom and dad treat me that way? Is it really because they were mean or was it something else? And you take on the experience of an often, well, first of all, you come in with compassion, which is trying to understand why. And then you go into their experience and go, well, let me see what it's like to be in mom's shoes, assuming that mom was in pain or dad was in pain. And that's why they did that, because they didn't know any better. See, now your experience can start to shift. Now you can free up. Now you can start to forgive. Even though the events were the same, you can shift perspective by looking at why and having compassion. But of course, we're taken to another level here to where instead of doing that, you would see mom is loving or dad is saying loving things to you right? Saying encouraging things. And if you imagine that, you will start to feel better. The trick is you have to let go of the fact that it doesn't matter of what quote unquote really happened. And of course, Neville's thing is going to change your reality line. It's going to change your whole assumption, right? And therefore future forward, you're going to respond differently. That's what Neville is saying. You're going to create differently. And why not go back to the past? Because if you're trying to future forward it and saying, here's my vision, I want this, but you keep having that lagging thing in the back of your brain or you can feel it in your body it's just that resistance this is why neville created revision i believe it has to be why uh, i've been playing with it around certain things with you know it's great especially with parent stuff and let's say with my mother who's passed away and i i feel better about it i even you know uh, i even play with the idea that she hasn't passed away and I and feel her presence here. And I'm telling you, this is so crazy for me to do. Coming from a background, to me, with a molecular biology degree, you know, believe physical reality was the, not the ultimate, ultimate, but that it was very, very real. I think we all have a sense if we take a look and just kind of quiet our mind that <clears throat> something greater has to be going on and this just physical world can't be it. Even though it, there's this sort of trick that it seems like it is. It's very, very strange. But that, that's only through a certain part of the brain, I think, or a certain part of uh, our apparent consciousness. Mafalda, anyone watching this, you can revise the fact. Yes. And to me, these are two different, thing, two different questions. If we're talking about actually changing the event, well, we can't know that. Just like in quantum physics, we can't know if the past is any different than the future or if it should be. And in the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know?, a, a very astute quantum physicist says this. He says, it doesn't make any sense in quantum physics. Why? You can't change the past if you can apparently affect the future. There's a great mystery called the mystery of the direction of time. There's a certain sense in which the fundamental laws of physics that we have don't make any dis interesting distinction, say, between past and future. Um, for example, it's a puzzle from the standpoint of the fundamental laws of physics. Why, should, why we should be able to um, remember the past um, um, and not have the same kind of epistemic access to the future. It's a puzzle from the standpoint of these laws why we should think something like by acting now we can affect the future but not the past. So yes, go, go for it Mafalda, do it. And just All that matters is you shift in memory and how you feel and then you follow the feeling. Why? Because the feeling is a secret. And if that feeling also connects to what you want to create then, then great or, or it unblocks you from what you want to create. That's all that matters. That's all that matters, okay? Don't let anybody tell you anything different. Definitely don't let mainstream society, oh, I'll have to bleep that out. Don't let mainstream society tell you that. The authoritarian uh, institutions, because their agendas are far different than help, helping you uh, have a wonderful life and experience or see, see, finding out the truth. They're not about that. And this is not conspiratorial, although a little bit of anger comes up, I should revise that <laughs> in me. <laughs> this is uh, a power that any of us can use because it's also proven that memory isn't reliable. This is neurologically proven. See, science, it's so funny. Science is proving more and more and more, from my view, what spirituality has been saying for a long time, especially things like non-duality, but it goes in alignment here with law of assumption as well. So there you go. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Please do drop a comment. Sign up for the Reality Shifting Quick Training. Get on the email list. Lots of good stuff coming your way and until next video we're complete see ya